Here are the first four terms of an arithmetic sequence. We've got 6, 10, 14, and 18. And part A says we should write an expression in terms of n for the nth term of this sequence. And this is for two marks. Now the first step we've got to do is work out the difference between these terms. Um, so between these two terms, the difference between 6 and 10, um, so that's 10 minus 6. So we've got 4. Now I'm going to look between these two terms. Well, the difference again is 4. We're now going to look between these two terms, and the difference again is 4. So that's great. Now we've identified this number here. So this is our key number we're going to be using in the next step. So now below it, what we're going to do is write out a 4 times table. So we're going to write out the times table of the difference here. Um, so I'm going to write out here, we're writing out 4n basically, and um, where we're going to sub into n um, different numbers. So for example, for the first term, we're going to sub n equals 1, second term n equals 2, and so on. And this is the first term, so we're going to sub n is 1. So that's 4 times 1, so that's just 4. Then so on. So the second term, um, we're subbing n equals 2, and so that's 4 times 2, so 8. Then 4 times 3 for the third term, which is 12. And then 4 times 4 for the fourth term, which is 16. So essentially, all writing out down here is a 4 times table. Now the next step is we need to work out how we can get from this line to this line. So essentially, work out the difference between the terms here. We can pick any of them to look at, but I'm going to look at this one first. And so we're going to pick 6 and 4. We're going to work out the difference between 6 and 4. So we've got 6 minus 4 equals 2. So to get from this line to this line, we add 2. So as you can see here, um, the difference every time is 2. So 2 is our new key number that we're going to be using. And hopefully it's a bit clearer now. So along here, we worked out the difference between the terms. And here we did the times tables of the differences. And then we worked out the difference between the original term here and the times tables term and we can see that's consistent through all of them and that's two so our final step is we're going to bring it all together we're going to bring in this part and this part to get our nth term so therefore our nth term is 4n plus 2 so it's whatever our times table part was over here adding on to it the difference here so you get a 4n plus 2 i'm going to write that in the answer box here and if you see where we get the marks, we get one mark for sort of starting to go through the process and realise, okay, so we've got this 4n part here. And then our second mark for getting down to the correct answer of 4n plus 2. So now looking at the next part here, we see that the nth term of a different arithmetic sequence is 3n plus 5. In part b, it says, is 108 a term of the sequence? And we need to show how we get this answer. So essentially, we need to answer this question, is 108 a term or not? So what I'm going to do is start off by assuming that 108 is a term. So 3n plus 5, if 108 is a term, from that we'll be able to get 108. So there'll be some value of n that we're subbing here, which will get us to 108. So I'm going to try and work out what that value is. So I'm going to sort of solve this equation. So 3n equals 108 minus 5. So 3n is 103. And if I divide both sides by 3, we'll have n equals 103 divided by 3. And because this is a calculator paper, we can do that. If you just put it into the calculator, we find out that that is 34.3 reoccurring. Okay, so if we just have a thing for a second, the way we get 108 as a term is if we sub n to be 34.3 reoccurring. So this shows that 108 isn't a term in the sequence. This is because we know n could only be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so on. We can't have any decimal numbers like this, for example. Because you can't be in between two terms. They're discrete values. So we've got a term at n equals 1, a term at n equals 2, a term at n equals 3, and so on. But we don't have a term here. So no. It's important to put this bit in. So no, because we're answering the question saying, is it a term? We're saying no. Because 34.3 row occurring isn't an integer. So it's not possible because we know n can only be um, values. So for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, it can only be integers. So seeing where we get the two marks from, we get one up here. Um, so for starting a method like this, then we get a second mark for realizing, okay, so n isn't an integer. So it's impossible because the answer is no. And then saying no and writing a convincing argument here. So like this, just saying that it's not an integer. I also want to point out here an alternative method you could have used. This one involves a bit more of sort of trying numbers. But for example, uh, we know our sequence is 3n plus 5. 
and we need to think um, what sort of numbers would get us around 108. So if I try 30, we could try n is 30. We get 3 multiplied by 30 plus 5. Okay, so that gets us 95. Um, so it's not quite to 108. So I might try something else. So I'm going to try n equals um, 34. To get 3 multiplied by 34 plus 5 equals 107. Okay, so we've got 107 as our 34th term. So it's going to be impossible to get 108. But just to show that, definitely, we're going to try the next term. So if the 34th term is 107, we're going to do the 35th term. It's going to do 3 multiplied by 35 plus 5. And that gives us 110. So as our 34th term is 107, and our 35th term is 110, we know that 108 isn't a term because there's nothing in between the 34th term and the 35th term. So as our conclusion, we could say, since the 34th term is 107 and the 35th is 110, no, 108 isn't a term in the sequence. So in this um, working of it, you get one mark for doing some of this work here, and get another mark for saying no, and sort of giving a little bit of an explanation for it.